So you've created your 3D design, or maybe you found one, but now what? How do you go from the screen version to the actual version? That's what we want to learn right now. First, you need an STL file. So you have a cool object on your screen, but first you'll need to be able to turn it into a language that your 3D printer can understand. If you're using Tinkercad, click Export and then choose STL file. So what is an STL file? Well, STL stands for stereolithography, but most people don't know what that means. So it might be more helpful to think of it as surface triangle language. And yes, I just made that up, but it can be helpful to think of it that way because what happens when you save something as an STL file is that your computer turns your object into a bunch of little triangles. It puts little triangles all over the surface and that makes it easier for your printer to be able to know what to print. Here you can see what happens to this cat model when I turn it into an STL file. See all those little triangles when I zoom in really close? And even with files like this iPhone stand that have a lot of flat surfaces, it still changes those into triangles. So now you have an STL file, but there's still more information that your printer will need before it can print that file. Next, you need to slice your file. Now there are special programs made just for slicing, and there are actually lots of different ones out there, but two of the most popular ones are Cura by Ultimaker and Prusa Slicer by Prusa. They are free to download from the internet and they will look a little different depending on which one you choose, but they all have the same goal. They break your file into slices or layers. That way your printer will know what to do for each layer as it's printing. To slice your print, first you need to open your slicing program. So from the desktop, I'm going to click on the icon for Prusa Slicer. That will open up the slicing program so that I can see the printer plate. Now, depending on the slicing program you're using, this might look a little bit different. The colors may be different. The buttons are in different places, but the process will be very similar. So the first thing I need to do is get my design from my STL file into this program. So I'm going to click on the add, or sometimes it's called the import button. Then I'm going to select the project that I saved as an STL file and click on open. This will open that file on the printer plate. Don't worry about the color. Your color will be determined based on what filament you stick in your printer. So you don't have to worry about changing the color here. Now I want to adjust the settings over here to make sure that the printer knows exactly how to print this file. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I have the correct printer selected. So I'm going to click on this drop down menu under printer. And you can see that I have a lot of printers here. You hopefully only have one or two maybe. If you don't have any, you might need to go here to add or remove printers and uh, follow those instructions to get your printer set up and ready to go. But I'm going to select the printer that I'll be using, which is this one right here. The next thing I want to check is the layer height. So if I click here, I can see the different layer heights that are available for this printer. So if you have a different printer, you're going to have some different numbers here, but almost all of them will have the 0.20. That's a normal layer height to print with. So if you're not sure, go with 0.20. The next thing I have is the filament. What type of filament are you using? So uh, PLA is a very common type of printer, uh, filament. PETG is another one. Your filament roll that you're going to stick in your printer will have it written on there what type of filament it is. So be sure and check that. If you select the wrong one, then your printer will heat up to the wrong temperature and won't print well. So make sure you have the correct type of filament selected there. Now supports is a complex topic and we'll cover that later video. But for now, you want to just know that that button is available. If you need support for your project, you can turn it on here. I'm going to use support for this one on the build plate only. So I'm going to select that. 
The infill is just how much filament goes in the middle of the print. Um, I usually use between a 15 or 20 percent. Now the next thing I have over here, if I come to this side, I have some other options. So I can rotate or resize, um, but here I have this option to place on face. So I can click on that button and then I can choose what side of my print will face down on the printer. So your print may have come into the program oriented the right way and it looks just like you want to print it. It may not have though, and if it didn't, that's a quick way to change the way that it's going to print. Uh, another option I have is to change the size. So down here at the bottom, it shows scale factors. I can change the scale factors if I want to make it smaller. I can make it 50% smaller so that it's half the size it was originally. I can make it 150%, make it larger than it was before. Or I can just leave it at 100% so that it comes in at the size that I actually created it. Now, once I have everything set up the way that I want to have it set up, I can click here on Slice Now. And now what it's done is actually broke that print up into layers. So it's telling my printer what to do on each little layer as it prints. That's why we call it slicing, because it's now broken up into those layers. Now I'm ready to get it to the printer. So your printer might use Wi-Fi, so you can send it to your printer via Wi-Fi, or if your printer uses an SD card or some other type of card or USB drive, you wanna get that from the printer, stick it into your computer, and once you do that, a little icon will pop up down here in the bottom right corner. You want to click on that icon to export it to that card. That'll make it go directly onto the card. And it's going to save it as what we call a G code. The G code is the type of file that your printer can read. It tells it exactly what to do on each layer, exactly what it needs to do. So that's the language of the printer. So I've got it saved as a G code. Make sure you recognize the name because this is what's gonna pop on your printer when you have to choose what it is you wanna print. So make sure you recognize that name and then click on save. Now I'm going to click on the eject button to take that out. And then I can take that out of my computer, take it to the printer and I am ready to start printing. And that's it. You've gone from having just an image on your computer screen to having a file that tells your 3D printer exactly what to do to make that 3D object. So just remember the three steps. Number one, export it as an STL file. Number two, slice your print in a slicing program. And number three, export it as a G-code and take that G-code to your printer.